Hi guys, it's Jessie Holton here, Stamping Up Demonstrator for Australia, jessieholton.com. Thanks for joining me for another crafting video and I really hope that you're having a lovely day today. I thought that I would show you how I made this box. This is one of the, um, well this is my 3D item uh, that I made for my presentation at Melbourne On Stage in last year, 2018, in uh, November. And I was really uh, very chuffed that I got asked to promote um, or present rather on this beautiful stamp set and the matching framelits. Um, and uh, so I made this little box. I was instructed to make something that, uh, that I fell in love with. So this is for my husband. Uh, it's got You Jumpstart My Heart and this is the key to my heart. <laughs> he likes the car Eleanor from Gone in 60 Seconds. So this is Eleanor, and we've actually, uh, well it's the same make and model as Eleanor anyway, and it's got a little, um, it looks very similar to Eleanor. I'm not sure if it's the same make and model, <clears throat> but we've got a little toy car that looks like this that the, the boys call Eleanor as well, and it's got a little green stripe up the side, so that's, I've stamped uh, this car in Stays On ink on silver foil and then use the blends to colour in the black racing stripe a little bit on the roof there and then the uh, Bermuda Bay to do the little green stripe down the side so I've used the um, the gear out of the framelits to this is it here, it's all one piece and I have used this uh, with the embossing mats on some other cards um, but this one is actually cut out with the designer series paper and this is another little framelit that comes with the set as well but the main thing that I wanted to show you today was how I got this rust effect on um, on the pizza box itself and it's a lot of fun so um, I'm not actually going to make the complete project with you today I'm just going to show you how to, how to do the embossing So of course you'll need either your card stock or a pizza box and you just want to pick these little bits out first. And we are going, so one side is matte and one side is glossy. The glossy side is actually food safe so if you fold that with on the inside of your box then you can actually use it um, for cookies and things like that. We are going to uh, use the matte side on the outside. So you just want to make sure that... And be careful with your folds. Be careful that you fold them well and fold them along the score lines correctly. Because uh, your pizza box um, will pop open and the, the little bits won't stay in place if you don't fold it correctly. So just fold all of those. You can use a bone folder to make sure that it's really nicely folded if you like. Um, but they pop together pretty easily. You just fold these little tabs in at the bottom. And then this bit gets folded over the top. And you can hear it when it clicks in place down there. And then the lid just sits inside so that's it stays together really nicely without any glue as long as you've um, burnished those lines correctly folded it along the score lines nicely so one thing that I learned when I did my first box because I did it all flat and then I folded it up afterwards and it did crack along um, the fold lines so what I did afterwards was I went over it with some shimmer paint uh, you know we've got those little pots of shimmer paint now so I actually dabbed that all along the edges to hide because it was bright white <laughs> where it had cracked open so it showed a lot so one thing that I would suggest is if you are doing um, something that's a 3d item or folded in any way that you Fold it first and make sure that you rub the embossing uh, Versamark 
across all of those um, edges that you want uh, so that it doesn't crack when you fold it up. So let's get started. This is lots of fun. I've got my Versamark here and I'm not even going to worry with the embossing buddy because we want it to be messy and we want it to be a lot of fun. I've got my copper heat embossing powder and my silver heat embossing powder. We're going to start with the silver. And I, I will unfold it just so that I can get Versamark all over it. So you want to make sure that your Versamark ink pad is quite juicy. So once that's inked up in the places where you want to do it, and um, the other thing that I would suggest is I did all underneath the box and it doesn't get seen, so you know you can concentrate on the lid and the sides and not the bottom so much. You don't need to waste your product. <laughs> Okay, there you have it. And we'll pop that away for now. I'll get my heat tool out and bear with me for the noise. So now that that is nicely done, now these are the bits that I was talking about, uh, that you will need to re-go over these uh, little corners and edges if you want them um, to be nice and smooth, because they will crack a little bit when you, when you fold them open. But this is just an example, so I'm not going to worry too much about that today. Now, you can get your Versamark again. I did try it last time just to add the the copper powder on top but it didn't stick without um, adding some more Versamark first so what you want to do is just give it a bit of a 
a rub. I did find last time that just by patting it on again, I actually left a whole heap of triangle marks. And you can see those on the back here where I didn't bother blending it very well. Um, on They were actually all up the front as well. You can see one just there. Um, but I actually managed to blend them pretty well just by leaving the heat on. And that's how I discovered that it will bubble and, and look like rust when you leave it on there too long. So I've already added my verse mark there. Oops, wrong lid. <laughs> And hopefully I don't have any of those triangle marks this time. Now, you don't need to worry too much about it. Just put it on there and um, you know, it's, it's rust, so it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> And we'll just heat this up again. So first time round, I'm just going to make sure that it's all... Um, that it's all melted and you can see it's already starting to bubble a little bit all right so that's all nice there now so I'm just going to concentrate on where it sort of meets and how cool is that I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll try and do it a bit closer for you. Doesn't that look awesome? All those little bubbles just pop. And it really does help those two colours just blend them together. It does get very hot so make sure that you keep your fingers out of the way. And I probably put just a little bit too much uh, copper on here this time. That'll do it, I think. <laughs> but doesn't that give a really cool rust effect? So there you go. I hope that you have enjoyed my little tutorial on how to make the rust effect with the heat embossing powders. I've used silver and copper. You could probably use um, different combinations of colours to come up with different rust looks. And I hope that you have fun creating with this fantastic look. It's certainly a lot of fun. Uh, this is Jessie Holton, your Stamping Up Demonstrator for Australia, jessieholton.com. Signing off for now. Remember to use my host code when you shop with me so that you get sport rotten. And if you would like a copy of the new Occasions catalogs, do drop me a line. I can post them anywhere within Australia as long as you don't have a demonstrator whom you already order through. And Celebration runs from January through March, and for every $90 you spend on my online shop, you get to choose a freebie. <laughs> so if you have any questions, just let me know. This is Jessie Holton. Have a good day.